Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve absolute value inequalities. Now, when solving absolute value inequalities, a lot of the steps are going to be exactly the same as solving absolute value equations. Meaning, to get rid of the absolute value sign, we're going to create our two solutions, or we're going to create our two cases. Now, remember, we can only create our two cases when our absolute values are isolated on one side of the inequality, which you can see in this case, we have all of our absolute values are isolated. So that is good. Now, the next thing, though, is when we create our Two cases. Remember, we create the case where our solution is going to be, um, we create our positive and our negative solution. Well, basically, what that is is like multiplying by negative one on to negate the one side. But remember, when we negate um, inequalities, we got to make sure we flip the sign. So, what that's going to do now is now we're going to have two inequalities. We're going to negate the side of one. What that's going to do is that's going to create compound inequalities. And the reason why I chose the same sign, less than or less than or equal to, for this video is what you'll notice is when we create our two solutions and negate you know, one of the, and flip one of the signs, what we do is we create the compound inequality with the, with the conjunction and. And I kind of chose a very simple problem first, which I'll spend a little time on explaining, but you'll be able to see why when it, whenever you have an absolute value inequality um, and you're solving with less than or equal to or less than, you'll have a compound inequality and. And I'll show you why. So, First thing we want to do is create our two cases. All right. So remember, we have absolute value of x is less than or equal to negative. Oops. Is equal to negative three. And then remember, negating. Since we're going to negate this three, we have to make sure we flip the sign. So x is now going to be greater than or equal to negative three. Now remember, I mentioned that our conjunction here. I didn't really leave a lot of space. Is going to be and. And think about it. X has to be less than 3, but x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3, right? It's going to be in between there, so that's going to be our conjunction. Now, when graphing there, there's kind of three different ways, or two different ways that I kind of showed you how to do this. And the one way that I kind of like to do it when I'm first learning how to do this, or at least explaining to students, is by using three, uh, three different inequalities. So the first inequality I'm going to graph is going to be x is less than or equal to 3. Then I'm going to graph x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And then I'm going to graph the solution. Okay. Now remember when and, you're dealing with where they intersect. But let's just graph each one separately. Now when I have my number lines like this, I'm going to use the same, um, same spacing and same uh, tally tick marks. I don't know. I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. So what I'll do is I'll have 0 be here. And I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. OK. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. OK. So remember, here is going to be 0 for each one of these. Now let's go ahead and graph. So if I was going to graph x is less than 3, all right, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, positive 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to make a nice big circle. Since that's less than or equal to, that's going to be a closed point. So I'm going to fill that in. Then x is less than 3. That's going to be all the values that are less than 3, which is going to be all the values to the left. And make sure you conclude an arrow, because that's going to keep on continuing. Then I go to graph x is greater than negative 3. First thing I do is I go to negative 3, which is right here. Again, that's greater than or equal to. So I'm going to fill that in. And then all the values that are greater than or equal to 3 are going to be your points to the right. Then for our solution, remember when we're dealing with the conjunction and, that's asking us for what is um, going to be the inner, you know, what is the intersection of these two solutions? Where, what are the solutions that are true for not only um, x is less than three, and, but also x is greater than or equal to negative three? And what you can see is that's going to be both of our points, negative three and three, and then all the solutions in between them. That's the only value where it's true for both inequalities. So my solution is going to be two closed points and then the shaded points in between. And that's it. OK. So now let's go and get into uh, the next, next example here, where again, we're going to create two cases. Uh, since we have our absolute values isolated, it's by itself. So now I go ahead and create my two cases. And when doing my two cases, I have y minus 4 is less than 7. And y minus 4 is greater than negative 7. Okay. Now we go ahead and use my inverse operations to solve. So I'm going to add a 4 to both sides for both inequalities. And now I have y is less than 11. And y is greater than negative 3. 
Now, what's another thing you can show is, you know, when you have these values, not only can you graph them separately like I did before, it does take a little bit extra time, but you could also graph, you could also rewrite this as a single compound inequality. Since we have y is greater than negative 3 and y is less than 11, you can see this is the lower limit, this is the upper limit. So I can rewrite this as a compound inequality looking like this. Negative 3 is less than y, which is less than 11. And you can see that this satisfies both these inequalities. y is greater than negative 3, and here y is less than 11. And a lot of times I like rewriting in this form because once I kind of know what I'm doing over here, I like to rewrite it in terms of an inequality like this because then I can just graph it on a single number line. Without having to graph it three times, I just make sure my number line includes the lower limit and the upper limit. So I'll do like 0 to be right here. Do negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then I go up to 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12. So then we know that the values have to be greater than negative 3, but less than 11. So I go to negative 3, I make a point. I go to 11, and I make a point. Now, again, the big difference here is these are you're dealing with less than. Here we're dealing with less than or equal to. So remember, less than or equal to, the points are closed. They're a part of the solution. Where here, they're going to be open, meaning they're not part of the solution. However, y, the solutions for y is between 11 and negative 3. So we're going to shade in all those points. Okay. So now let's get into the last example here. Um, here I have 7 minus 2, absolute value of 7 minus 2r is less than or equal to 19. So again, we're going to go through the same case. I'm going to create my two cases. So here I have 7 minus 2r is less than or equal to 19. Basically, you just rewrite it without the absolute value. And 7 minus 2r is greater than or equal to negative 19. Remember, we got to make sure we flip the sign and negate. So now, go ahead and solving. I subtract a 7 on both sides. I have a negative 2r is less than or equal to positive 12. Then I have to divide by a negative 2. So now, since I'm dividing by negative 2 to solve, I have to flip the signs again. And that gives me a negative 6. Okay? Then that's and. I'll try to move this over here. Um, first thing I do is subtract 7 on both sides. So I have a negative 2r is greater than or equal to a negative 26. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. Again, now, since I'm dividing by negative 2, I have to flip the sign. And I'm left with an r is less than or equal to a positive 13. So I could rewrite it as a compound inequality. Or a lot of times what I like to do is you could also do the graphs outside of them. So you could graph them separately or just actually do your shading off of the graph. So let's go and take a look at it doing it that way. So again, we see my lower limit now is negative 6. My upper limit is 13. So I'll have 0 here. Let's do negative 1, negative 2, 4, negative 5, 7. Probably be easier to have this pre-done. <laughs> but anyways, so we know that r has to be greater or equal to negative 6. So I go to negative 6 here. I make a nice big closed point, and I say, all right, that's going to be all the points going to the right. r is less than or equal to 13. I go to the negative 13, and I close that point. And then I say, all right, that's going to be all the points going to the left. So therefore, you can see that my shaded area is going to be only where those two points intersect, which is going to be between negative 6 and 13. So then I'll shade that above. And then technically, I'm going to leave this up there for instructional purposes. But if I was taking like a test or doing my homework, I would then erase that top part. I just kind of use that to help determine. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve absolute value uh, inequalities by using the compound inequality and. Thanks. Hello.